One of the things that a lot of people don't realize is that this concept of regionalization has been around for a long time. In 1973, the Club of Rome actually published a diagram showing that they wanted to divide the world up into 10 different regions, financial regions. They called them actually financial kingdoms in which each kingdom would have its own separate economic integrity so that they would be able to carry forth the types of supervision, the types of economic flow and so forth that is necessary to stabilize what is going on in the world and provide the mechanism, the structure, architectural structure to begin the population reduction that they've always been wanting to promote. In order to achieve their idea of world government or global governance as they now call it, they wanted to actually divide the world up into 10 economic regions. They call them 10 kingdoms, but that was kind of a language that just didn't fit very well within the psyche of the American people and, and Europeans at the time, so they changed it to, fi to financial regions, and that's what it's been called ever since. It's one of the issues in which all of the member organizations of this effort, of the Anglo-American uh, faction, have been working on. The Trilateral Commission, the Club of Rome, the Bilderbergers, the CFR, and so forth, have all been working on this. And here you can see the diagram of how they envisioned it back in 1973. One of the ironies, I think, of our times is the fact that during the 1960s and so forth, they begin to have a dogma that the environment is being destroyed by human beings. And this was perpetrated or spread out through the media. You can't watch any nature program on chimpanzees, whales, it doesn't really matter, without coming away from the fact that human beings are a virus. We're killing planet Earth, according to this media hype that we've had ever since the 1960s. Now it's global warming. You can't hardly go through a week without hearing some scare story about global warming that if we don't stop it in the next few years, uh, the earth is going to boil up and blow away, even though that there's been times in history where it's been much warmer than it is today, and of course, obviously, times in history where it's been much colder. None of these things really by themselves really are caused necessarily by human activity. It's a natural cycle. We can destroy inv the environment. We can destroy ecosystems, but now we have the incentive to maintain ecosystems, to manage ecosystems, but that's not good enough. We can actually manage ecosystems better than nature can herself. We can make ecosystems healthier, but that's not an alternative. Their alternative is that you have no use. That's the only solution that they have for protecting the environment is you cannot use it. You cannot use it. You must protect it. You must put it in the form of wilderness, whatever the case might be. Well, nonetheless, we cannot use it. Humans are the cause of the problem. We have many people in our university systems right now, PhDs and so forth, that really believe that we must reduce our human population by 70, 80, even 90 percent in order to protect Mother Earth. Many of these people actually believe that there should be wholesale slaughter of human beings in one form or another, either through disease or actual government programs of some sort or another. The actual Wildlands Project itself uh, that I fought back in the 1990s calls for the reduction in human population of 80 percent in the next 50 years. They don't say how to get there, although they do make it very clear that they would probably do it through agricultural means. They really truly believe that if fertilizers and so forth cause ecological destruction because they believe that, then we must reduce the use of fertilizers and it's fertilizers and genetic improvement and so forth that have caused the green revolution that fed the world from the 1960s on. If we eliminate that, will only have food production enough for about a third of the global population that we have today. That would eliminate the population within one generation. One of the things that Carol Quigley, one of the foremost historians of the 20th century, said after going through all the documentations of the global elite for at least two years, he said in his book, Tragedy and Hope, towards the end of the 20th century, the expert will replace the democratic voter in control of the political system. This is because planning will inevitably replace laissez-faire in the relationship between government and business. This planning may not be single or unified, but it will be planning in which the main framework and operational forces of the economic system will be established and limited by the experts on the governmental side, and then the experts on the economic side will do their planning within these established limits. And so what Carol Quigley is saying is that by the 21st century, we are going to be living in a planned society controlled by the experts. Now, look back. Now that we're in the 21st century, has not that occurred? 
it has, just as he said was going to happen. But of course, he had access to the records of what they were intending to do. But it actually gets worse. Back in 1965, the Department of Health and Education and Welfare, HEW, sponsored a study to define how they're going to get from where they were then in 1965 to where we are now in the 21st century. They came out with a report in 1969 called the Behavioral Science Teacher Education Program that's now in fully integrated within our educational program. And this is what they said, and I want to have you hang on to your hats because you will not believe what they planned to do back in 1965-69 and what is happening actually today. He said, calculations of the future and how to modify it are no longer considered to be an obscure academic pursuit. Long-range planning and implementation of plans will be made by a technological scientific elite. This will strain the democratic fabric to the ripping point. The Protestant ethic will atrophy as more and more enjoyed a varied, leisured, and guaranteed sustenance. Work as a means to and an end of living will diminish. Most people will tend to be hedonistic, and a dominant elite will provide the bread and circuses to keep social dissension and disruption to at a minimum. A small elite will carry society's burdens. The resulting impersonal manipulation of most people's lifestyles will be softened by provision for pleasure-seeking and guaranteed physical necessities. The controlling elite will engage in power plays largely without the involvement of most of the people. And that is so true today. Most people have no idea what's going on in the international arena, have none. Almost all of this is being done in secrecy. Going on with this report, the society will be a leisurely one. People will study, play, and travel. Some will be in various stages of drug-induced experiences. Each individual will receive at birth a multi-purpose identification which will have, amongst other things, extensive communications and control uses. Each individual will be saturated with ideas of information. Each will be self-selected. Other kinds will be imposed overtly by those who assume the responsibility for the other's actions. Relatively few individuals will be able to maintain control over their opinions. Most will be pawns of competing opinion molders. It's amazing how back in the 1960s they began the process of getting us to where we are right now. If you look at society today, almost every one of the characteristics that I read have come true. We are living in a planned society. We are living focused on leisure and recreation. We live in a drug-induced society. All of the things that they talked about in the 1960s have become a reality by the 21st century. This is the level of extent of control that they have. Most people's opinions are not done by through education and through knowledge. They're done by molding your ideas. And, you, and that's why it's very hard for the average person to understand the fact that we're moving into a global society that is totally controlled by puppeteers, the global elite.